everybody, I'm Randy from ElderGeek.com. With me today, I have Amanda Laprie. I hope I just said that properly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we even talked about it before the interview, how to pronounce your name, and I, I forgot it already. But uh, Amanda Laprie, who, who uh, um, is famous in the uh, video game music world uh, for doing uh, video game covers. Uh, Amanda, it's really, really great to talk to you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> how did you how did you get into doing this? Now you you obviously write and record your own you know personal music and and original stuff, but uh, how did you get into doing video game covers? Uh, well, I have been kind of messing around with video game covers since I first started learning guitar, which was I was about fourteen or fifteen. I would record little versions of uh, songs from Wizards and Warriors in my room. And things like that. I've always wanted to to uh, to do covers. I just never thought I was a good enough guitarist. Um, so I would write songs, and then often I would write songs about games. And then one day I was like, "Well, I kind of feel like starting a band just for video game covers." Nice. And I called that band Descendants of Erdrich. Um, and well, after that, I discovered there's an entire community of people who like this stuff. I had no idea that even existed. So that's that's sort of how it worked. Uh, that's how it went for me. <laughs> nice. And Descendants of, uh, Descendants of Erdrich obviously is a reference to, <clears throat> excuse me, is obviously a reference to Dragon Warrior, which yes. is probably what I'm going to be having up in the background while we're, while we're cool. talking today. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So do you, have you done a lot of like Dragon Warrior covers then? I mean, Dragon Warrior itself had a really cool soundtrack to it, but there weren't that many tracks to it. Yeah, well, um, so far, um, my band arranged a couple of different versions of the first game. Um, right now, the most current, uh, the current uh, lineup of the band, I did a nine-minute long arrangement. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any audio of it uh, to give to you. Uh, <laughs> we haven't had it actually recorded yet. Um, but yeah, that is my my current. Uh, that's what I'm most proud of right now. Nine minute long Dragon Warrior takes you through the entire game from start to finish. Nice. So. <laughs> That's awesome. What <laughs> yeah. uh, what other titles have you kind of covered? Like what do you what do you aside from from uh, Dragon Warrior, what else are you more popularly known for? Um I love doing RPGs specifically from about the Super Nintendo era. So Which is Final the Fan golden age of RPGs. Yeah, by the way. definitely. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy VI is my favorite Final Fantasy. Mm. Uh, Chrono Trigger also. Can you can you um, see this right here? It's the. Uh, yes, I saw that. <laughs> if I pan up I a little bit. Was, was can, uh, I saw some landscapes from FF6. There's another Six. landscape right there so, <laughs> too. That's awesome. Actually, um, I, I was about to say Link to the Past. I also see that up there as well. Y oh yeah, um, there, look, there's there's the Link to the Past, and right here's uh, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, right now I am working on a, an arrangement of Secret of Mana for my band as well, so I'm just kind of doing all sorts of things. Um, I also have a band camp where I've done some various VGM covers that were uh, for uh, for donation uh, requests. That's so I've awesome. got about five or six kind of random songs up there. Some of them are just kind of silly things that I came up with. Uh, like I took one of the stages of Bionic Commando and then realized it sounded a lot like Cindy Lauper. So <laughs> I sort of... Those two worlds seem like they would go together yeah, pretty well, actually. It just, it worked. It's it's in the same key. It's like the same bass line. And I just kind of <laughs> recorded some Cindy Lauper vocals over it. And that's up there on my band camp. So I have a lot of random stuff as well. That is really cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Um... Oh, crap. I don't remember what I was going to ask. But uh, <laughs> so you play guitar. Is there anything else that you play? Uh, it's mostly just guitar, and I also sing, or do vocals. Yeah, now you do a fair amount of live performing too, right? Yes. How often do you, like, tour? And do you tour as yourself, or do you tour mostly as Descendants of Erdrich? Or... I tour as myself. Uh, my original music, just I just go by my first and last name. Um, it's, it's pretty video game inspired. I have a song that I wrote about, um, one of the scenes in Final Fantasy VI. I've got a song that was inspired by a scene in Act Razor, so you know, just kind of random stuff like that. Um, and yeah, this last tour we went for about three weeks, went through the West Coast and uh, sort of the Midwest area. That's really great. 
Well, not a, lot, not a lot of people. I mean, I, I know you're very talented, but I mean, I'm sure there's a, a good amount of luck that comes along with this as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, luck is part of it. It also helps that there is a community that that appreciates video game music and video game inspired music. It's a really so tight knit community so too. Like you'll see a lot of the same people in a lot of this, you know, different places. Yes. That's awesome. Definitely. That's really cool. So, um, are you going to be at this year's Magfest? Yes, I am performing uh, with those who fight. That's a it's a Final Fantasy themed rock opera. We're doing a main stage. Um, not wow. sure what day, but yeah, we we are definitely going to be performing. Are you going to be a night show or a day <laughs> show? That's always, uh, it that's is always a like... night show, I believe. It's okay. one of the it's one of the big concert shows. Oh, great! Oh, yeah. That'll be awesome. <laughs> that'll be very awesome. I will definitely try to make my way over there. I mean, you know, Magfest is always just kind of a crazy time, and you don't. There's just so much to do, and you can uh, you can't keep up with everything. Yeah, you don't know where you're gonna be <laughs> in five minutes, let alone like a day yeah. and a half from from wherever you are. So yeah, that's great. How did you uh, end up in the? How did you end up with the people? <laughs> the people from those who fight. How did you end up in those who fight? <laughs> it just sounds like. <laughs> um, well, uh, Big Matt. He is uh, one of the Magfest guys. Uh, he uh, he and I were talking one day, and he had this idea about this Final Fantasy rock opera that he wanted to start. Um, and I said, "Oh my gosh, I love Final Fantasy. I love all the music." And I, if you need a guitar player, I'm a guitar player. He goes, yeah, we need a rhythm guitar player. I also need another female vocal. And he had no idea that I sang. And I was like, oh, yeah, I sing. Here's a demo. And I sent him uh, one of my songs that I released uh, several years ago. And he goes, wow. Okay, well, looks like I killed two birds with one stone, got That's a rhythm cool. guitarist and a female vocalist at the same time. That's cool. really cool. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what uh, what your set's gonna be like for the show this year? Uh, we do. Um, we pretty much sing over uh various Final Fantasy songs. Uh, some of my favorite ones that we do are the FF6 Opera House song. So it's sort of uh, that one is uh, sort of like a duet between myself and the other uh, male vocalist. Nice. Um, and we do. Well, all my favorite ones are the FF6 ones, obviously. Um, obviously. Another one of my favorites is we do Devil's Lab. Oh, that's uh, a really the, cool song, though. The Magitech Facility yeah. uh, song, and uh, that one's got vocals over it and everything. It's 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 one of my favorite ones to perform. Are the vocals as creepy as kind of that that sound that music? Sounds? Yeah, yeah. It's sort of uh, the main vocalist. He plays a mad scientist, and I sing some parts like I'm. I'm a girl that's in captivity, so I just sort of like answer. Oh, you're one of the it's... espers. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really, really cool. So, uh, you also worked on uh, Tron with Stemage. Yes. Tell me some uh, dirty things that Stemage doesn't want out <laughs> about himself. <laughs> well, <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind. And is... when I when I do, if I interview Alexander Brandon after this, I'm gonna have him tell me dirty things about <laughs> you that you don't want out too. Well. Uh... The first thing that comes to mind about Stemage is that he comes to me and he goes, Hey, I would love for you to do this choir part. Uh, I need, you know, I might need some extra vocals. And he sends me a link in Dropbox with everything perfectly laid out for me. Nice. Like, I, he, he basically had it perfect. I didn't have to ask him a single question. I wasn't confused as to what I was doing. <laughs> I just opened up these files like, Oh my gosh, this guy. He's just... <laughs> There's nothing that this guy can do wrong. He well, doesn't. That's the opposite perfectly. I'm looking for. You're telling me good I things. I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that you could ever say negatively about this guy. So I did these vocals, and I was like, I can't finish the third round of them. I'm sorry. I don't have enough time. He goes, Oh no, no, not a problem. I'm using whatever you gave me, and it ended up sounding fantastic. That's great. So nothing but positive things to say about Stemage. That's awesome. That's really good to hear, though. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was talking with him last week and and uh, he's he's really proud of that Tron album he did and I you know for his video I wanted to also post stuff on the side I'm probably just gonna go with Metroid but uh, man I would really love to do Tron along with with you know the music from uh, that album but yeah yeah what are you gonna do. <laughs> 
What uh, you know what uh, what games aside from the the final or aside from RPGs on on the on the SNES? Is there any modern stuff that you you ever hear oh. that you're like I really want to kind of take a stab at that and see how it sounds? Honestly, I'm not very familiar with very many modern games at no. all. Um, I borrowed my brother's DS, not 3DS, but <laughs> DS, yeah. for the first time like three weeks ago, and that was the first time I ever played a DS. Yeah, but you know, there's a ton so, um, of awesome games on a DS, though. Yeah, uh, and, and of course, uh, knowing me, I, I get a brand new system I've never played before, which is not really that new. Right. What do I play? Chrono Trigger. Yeah, of course. It's a really good version <laughs> on there too. I didn't use the touch screen that much on there, but it's a good yeah, version of the game. Yeah, no, I, I'm. That's too advanced for me. I, <laughs> I haven't really figured that one out yet. Yeah, so I'm, I mostly just kind of stick to NES, SNES, PlayStation. Uh, PS2 is about as far as I've gotten so yeah. far. <laughs> what on, so, what on PS2 yeah. have you, have you tinkered with? Um. I haven't covered any songs uh, from the PS2 era. Uh, I'm kind of looking into doing a little bit of um, a little bit of. Uh, um, let me think about it. I'm not honestly that sure. Uh, my knowledge of the PS2 is just like stuff like GTA's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think that there's like a? Um, do you think there's like a difference in the way that music is approached? you know, from the SNES and the PlayStation 1 era versus, like, the way it's approached now? I mean, obviously, it's a more cinematic feeling now. Yes. So, does, do you think that has an effect on what you choose to cover? Um, I'm not sure if it's the fact that the music's more cinematic or it's just uh, nostalgia. Uh, you know, that's just one of those things that, you know, you can't really pick one or the other. Yeah. Um, I know some of my favorite songs... From classic games always have very good melodies and a uh, part of that may have been just at the time the composers were really limited with what they could work with so you have your nes and you have your four channels and one of those channels is just a noise channel so you have three channels that you could use for music <laughs> you better create something really good right and you know they did you know the Mega Man series just has fantastic music it's catchy um and so now those limitations aren't really there uh, so, you know, composers can do all sorts of really cool things, and that might take away from the necessity of having the really good hooks or the really good melodies. Yeah. There's all sorts of weird theories you can come up with, with, you know, <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, this is all stuff that I've thought about. <laughs> yeah, I understand, I understand. Uh, what, uh, yeah, um... You know, aside from Final Fantasy VI, like when you when you think back to gaming when you were younger, like what uh, you know, what games really, what games really stir up emotions inside? You know, that that make you want to write more music. Uh, well, Dragon Warrior always was like that for me. Just simple game, really sort of haunting music. Yeah. Um, it's just the sense of adventure. Uh, Link to the Past. Uh, the Metroid series, specifically Super Metroid. I love yes. that one so much. Yeah. Um, just these games all kind of give you this sort of atmosphere. Um, and uh, some of these storylines, they were kind of basic, but you could just imagine so many more things that are happening. Um, like, for example, I have a song on my album. Uh, it's called The Gift. And it was inspired by a scene from ActRaiser. Uh, one of the Super Nintendo launch titles. Um, yeah. That game is insanely amazing. It's just, uh, it's fairly underrated, I think. I'm not sure. Maybe it's not underrated. I, I just don't know if <laughs> people have played it. But uh, yeah, there's a scene in that game where uh, there's a town that cannot grow because the citizens are all fighting with each other and they can't get along and they're arguing. So you go to a different town and you find a gift of music or the gift of a melody and you play the song for the town and it soothes them and helps them build their town again so just you know really um you know these are really cool concepts especially whenever you're a kid and, and you play these it's just you know i i thought that was an amazing scene i really wanted to write a song about it that's so that's awesome <laughs> yeah that's really cool well um, you know, what albums do you have? 
what albums do you have coming up on? Do you have anything coming up on Louder? I mean, we're doing the I'm doing this interview video series like kind of in in cooperation with Louder. Do you have anything coming up on on Louder that people can be looking well, forward to? Well, let me check really quick here because <laughs> um, I was just on my original um, Facebook music page today and noticed that I think I had a link to Louder. Ah, uh, no, I don't. Okay. I know you're on, you're on there right now with with the Tron album for, with, uh, with Okay, Stanish. I don't Oh, I need to figure out how to get on louder. I really thought I was I was what? on there. You know like um, everybody that works over there. There's like five people that work over there. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I am and I'm just not aware of it. Um I've got uh well I've got an album called uh, Beneath the Forest of Error that is my own original album. It was released last year. Um that one is all over the place. It's on iTunes. Um it might be on louder and I'm just not aware of it. Uh <laughs> I know that's that's not um, the most ideal answer for that, but uh, <laughs> that's okay, really. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, beneath the forest of error. Um, uh, that's all of my original music. Um, I've got that one on Bandcamp as well. Uh, Bandcamp is where you can find my fairly obscure video game covers. I've been kind of working on as for uh, donation requests. Um, I just finished one of the Ganon battle theme from Link to the Past. Oh, that's a cool. And one. that. That's what was requested, and the first thing I think is, oh, yeah, that song's awesome, and I listen to it, oh, it's 20 seconds long. Yeah. What yeah. am I going to do with this? It's a really so, panicky song, and it just yeah, moves it's really quickly. Yeah, like 20 seconds, I was like, all right, we're going to have to get creative here. So I, I, <laughs> I, I actually ended up doing a four-minute version. It's not like it loops for four minutes right. or anything. It, it starts with uh, whenever you fall into the pyramid, and then it's got that haunting music that comes in and then you got the proggy bass line and drums like go into the regular boss theme for a little bit I, I just you know i tried to make a a whole song out of 20 seconds so uh that's up there i got my bionic shebop which is bionic commando versus cindy lopper uh <laughs> i gotta give that a listen because honestly that sounds perfect yeah uh, also, I did do a cover uh with stemage um of 3d world runner I vaguely remember that. That one. is an NES game that yeah. I never played. Honestly, uh, the most notable thing about it is that it was Uimatsu's very first game that he really? composed. Yes. Uh, so Stemage and I kind of worked on this cover together. So that one's also available on my Bandcamp. I I'll send you the link. That's all that stuff. So. Were you at the Magfest when he performed live? Yes. Was well, that not the most amazing thing you've ever seen? <laughs> I remember last year uh, Metroid Metal was performing and I had stepped out of the room briefly. I forgot to, I went to go get like a drink of water or something cause they didn't really allow bottles or anything in the concert hall. I'm walking down the hall and I overhear like Metroid metal covering act razor. Oh, cool. And I just freak out. I'm just like, <laughs> I run back into the concert hall. I'm like, here, take my bottle of water. I don't care security, <laughs> keep it. Oh my gosh. And I just ran right back in and it's just, it was, so awesome! I, I just I knew that he had uh, that he had written it um, an act raiser arrangement. I just wasn't expecting Metroid Metal to perform it live last year at Magfest. So that That's was awesome. One of the coolest things. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of video game cover bands they they I don't want to I don't want to call it drifting, but they explore and oftentimes they'll they'll do covers of television shows from the '80s or, or cartoons from the '80s. Um, have you done that at all, or is that is that something um, that you're like? Meh. I don't know. I haven't really. Um, that hasn't really been like a big passion to 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 go for. It's it's mostly like, um, oh, well, I mostly want to cover songs, uh, you know, pop songs, and then sometimes I'll I'll try to integrate a pop song with a video game song, like the Cindy Lauper idea. Uh, there was another little um, brief idea last year I had with combining. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII's Man with the Machine Gun, the Laguna battle theme, with Kylie Minogue's Can't Get You Out of My Head. Did it work? Yes, it did work. <laughs> I just need to actually record it now. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just little things like that. Like, I, um, I've also mashed up just pop songs. I, I mashed up Lady Gaga's Alejandro with Ace of Base, Don't Turn Around, because they're basically the same song. <laughs> so, you know, just little things like that. Um, actually, really I played, cool. I played uh, we performed that one on this last tour, um, and I could tell whenever the audience was, like, as soon as I go into Ace of Base, they're just like, 
Oh my gosh, I know this song. <laughs> yep, that's Ace of Base. <laughs> that's funny. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, it's always it's always kind of fun when a band does stuff like that. You know, I I can't remember who it was that I, I was watching, um, but they went from like Double Dragon to the theme to Charles in Charge. And oh I was, wow! I was like, what? Sometimes these songs they just sort of work well together. So sometimes <laughs> you know you just got to figure out a way to to make them fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Well, hey, I appreciate you you know popping on and chatting with yeah. me. Yeah. Um, do you have a YouTube channel that uh, that you post things to regularly? Yes, oh, I've got two. Wonderful. Um, so if you click on Amanda's picture, which should be above my head, um, <laughs> you will be taken directly to one of her channels, which I'm sure she's going to have information about both of them. And yeah. then in the description below the video, you're also going to be able to uh, check out uh, where to find all of her music everywhere. So do that. Go check out her stuff. Yes. Uh, you can stream your stuff. You can stream my music for free if you want to buy it. That's awesome, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Support the independent artist, man. Yes. That's great. Well, hey, thanks for thanks for coming on tonight. I really appreciate it, and I'm sure I'll be seeing you at Magfest. Yes, you will be. I I, I will definitely be there. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank Have a good night, everybody. Much.